Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video we're taking a look at Windows XP to me, which is a mod of Windows XP that makes it look and feel like Windows Millennium Edition. Now I'm not exactly sure why you would want something like this, especially in 2025, but nonetheless it is going to be very interesting to look at. One reason I can think of just right off the bat is Windows ME was the last version of Windows to be based on the 9X kernel, and Windows XP is based on the Windows NT kernel, which is still used today. Um, however, Windows 2000 looked pretty much identical to ME with a few minor tweaks, so again, not sure why you would want this, but it's going to be a very interesting mod and something I am very eager to take a look at. Um, so we are jumping into what we would typically expect for Windows XP setup. It looks exactly like Windows XP, obviously because this is Windows XP. But again, I'm very eager to see what this looks like, um, how well it actually imitates Windows ME, because I feel like it would be a little complicated to make Windows XP look like Windows ME, but I could be wrong. And here we go. So right off the bat, it just says, welcome to Windows Millennium Edition. So it doesn't even say XP. All right, so this is fun. It did not find any hard disks on the VM. I will be back after I correct this. All right, so by default, VMware added a SCSI drive. I just went ahead and switched it to an IDE, and now it's being detected by Windows. So we can go ahead and proceed by selecting that brand new IDE drive I just added to the virtual machine. Um, it's gonna format the drive, and then it'll move into, yep, it's copying files. Well, it's actually checking the disk right now, but then it'll copy files over. Um, where we should reboot into the out-of-box experience, which I assume has also been themed to look like Windows ME. All right, and here we are in the out-of-box experience, and just like I predicted, it looks exactly like Windows ME, despite the fact that it is Windows XP. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter the product key because YouTube would love to copyright strike me if I showed the product key. All right, and let's go ahead and continue through the setup so we won't set an administrator password. Uh, definitely practicing the most secure things here. Um, and we can see that it even gets the cringy pictures from Windows ME. It shows them in the top right exactly like the original did. Uh, so they really were able to copy this down to a T. I'm honestly impressed. Now it has been a while since I actually installed Windows ME, so I can't say for certain how accurate it is, but I, from what I recall, it's very similar. In fact, I think the last time I installed Windows ME was from when I did a video in 2019. Um, installing Windows ME on a modern computer. That was, I think, the last time I even thought about Windows Millennium Edition. All right, and here we are. I don't recall this actually being in Windows ME, but I know it's in Windows XP, so it might be just a customized version from Windows XP. It's probably not gonna be able to get internet connectivity, so we'll just go ahead and skip over that. Uh, we do not wanna register with Microsoft. That would be really bad. And then here we are, logging into Windows Millennium Edition supposedly. Under the hood, it's Windows XP. Um, first things first, let's go ahead and install VMware tools. We should be getting the original Windows XP VMware tools because that's what I set this to be. Um, so let's go ahead. I opened the wrong thing. I've somehow this opened. Welcome to Windows Millennium Edition. Uh, it's definitely really glitching out. I just, I just want to get out of this. Um, I don't need this. Well, I'll be back once I get VMware tools installed because this is really getting frustrating. All right, and here we are finally in the desktop of Windows XP to ME. Um, at first glance, if you put this even in front of me, I would not be able to tell you this is actually Windows XP under the hood. Let's go ahead and start by taking a look at some of our desktop icons. On the desktop, we have a My Briefcase file. Um, then we have My Documents, followed by My Computer, which does show Windows ME Service Pack 3. Um, followed by My Network Places, uh, Internet Explorer, which it's probably going to make us go through this whole fun process. Um, unlike some of the other ISOs we take a look at, this is probably legitimately really Internet Explorer. Yep, IE6. Um, there have been newer like Windows 10 mods that make Windows 10 look like Windows XP, and they actually use Firefox theme to be Internet Explorer but because this is legitimately Windows XP, it is legitimately Internet Explorer. We then have online services, which only has a refer me to more internet service providers. Um, we don't need to explore that. We have, of course, Outlook Express, probably Outlook Express 6. Oh, this is Outlook Express 5. We can even see, like, confirming that this is Windows XP. XP SP 3 um, is showing in a lot of these abouts. And lastly, we have the Windows Media Player, which has that classic look where things actually used to look interesting and not minimalistic. Moving down to the taskbar, we have our system time. Uh, we then have MSN Messenger Service, 
followed by the volume slider, VMware tools that I installed, and then safely remove hardware, something that has stuck with Windows for so long. Over on the left side of the taskbar, we have our kind of quick settings. So we have show desktop, Internet Explorer, and then launch Outlook Express. Um, and if you hit the over arrow, you can see that we also have Windows, Mo Windows Media Player. Let's click on the start button here. And now we have the Windows ME start, start menu. At the top, we have Windows Update, which just opens the legitimate Windows Update Microsoft web page that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, we then have our programs, so it can get very specific with all of these programs. I mean, it's crazy just how many are actually included. Um, and they're all Windows ME related applications, so none of these appear to be directly from XP, which is very cool. Um, I am a little interested. I don't know exactly how the 9X to NT transition occurred, um, but I'm surprised a lot of these applications running because they were built on 9X and now we're running them on NT. Under games, we have all of the, of course, the games. All of these are actually XP games. Uh, Pinball, obviously a classic XP game, but further we have all the internet applications that I don't think those were in Windows ME. Moving down, we have documents, so my documents and my pictures. Then we have settings, so this is where we have our control panel, where this definitely does not look like a Windows ME control panel. This looks like one in Windows XP. That looks more like Windows ME when we go to the classic view. Closing out of this, let's go down to search. So we have for files or folders, internet or for people. Uh, one thing I noticed under settings too, not to get off topic, is that I actually have dial up networking as an option, um, which I don't think that that was an option in XP. It probably was, but it wasn't as prevalent as it is here. We then have Help, which is the full Windows Millennium Edition Help, uh, probably copied right out of the original 9X. Then we have Run. We can go in, we can type Winver, and see that this is Windows Millennium Edition, uh, copyright to 2001. Let's take a look at a few more things, and there's one thing specifically I really want to show off. Let's go ahead into my computer and take a look at the C drive where we can see again, remember this is Windows XP, that we have a 39.9 gig disk. We're using 2.57 gigs, uh, which means we have 37.4 gigs free. Lastly, let's take a look at the task manager, which I forgot you can't right click on the taskbar in Windows ME. Um, we go to performance, we can see that we're using typical Windows XP utilization. So average CPU utilization and then 132 megs of RAM. I think I only gave us VM one or two, yeah, one meg of one gig rather, sorry, of RAM. Uh, let's take a look at the file explorer. Just I know we were just in there, but it does really compare to Windows ME. It's not exact like this doesn't look like ME, um, but it's it's a pretty close match, honestly. I mean, I'm kind of impressed they were able to get this far. I mean, so far I would not be able to tell this is Windows XP in any way. Um, there's even the Windows ME getting started that opens upon first boot. Lastly, let's take a look at some of the wallpapers that we have here by default. So we can even switch to Windows Classic, which is probably the same thing as what we're using right now. Um, but yeah, it looks like we have all of the regular Windows ME, uh, the various wallpapers here. Um, I actually like that one a lot. I like that one too, just because it shows branding. One thing I didn't notice is in here is the instability that Windows ME had. Uh, this has seemed pretty stable so far. Lastly, I do want to reboot the OS just to show you what the startup screen looks like because it is quite interesting. Uh, we can see it right here, Windows ME Millennium Edition, Second Edition. So it's Windows Millennium Edition, Second Edition, which it kind of is. Think of it like Windows ME built on NT kernel. So that being said, this is just a high level overview of Windows XP to ME. Definitely an interesting mod and something I'm very happy I got an opportunity to take a look at. So with that being said, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new around here as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. Let me know down in the comments below if there's any other ISOs or custom OSs that you want me to take a look at because I love doing viewer recommended videos. That being said, see you all in the next one.